Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Genevieve from Charm Customs. Today is a fun one. Today is going to be a tutorial on how I make Louis Vuitton custom Doc Martens. So this print is actually painted on here and I'm going to show you guys how I did that using Angelus paints and a vinyl stencil among some other supplies. All of which I will be linking down below in the description, so not to worry, you guys can follow along at home. I also sell these, so if you're interested, just DM me on Instagram at Charm Customs, or check out my website, charmcustoms.com, and I got you on a pair. And if you wanna show love, you wanna show some support, you love my channel, you think I'm talented, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe after you watch this video. Let's get started. The first thing you need is a pair of Doc Martens. I have soft leather ones, but you can use the hard leather too, and you can also use vegan leather. Just make sure you got a pair of shoes or this will not work. You're gonna need a vinyl stencil. I made this with my Cricut machine, but you can buy these on Etsy too. I'll find some and link them below. Cotton balls, 100% acetone. You can also use Angelus Prepare and Deglazer. Vinyl transfer tape. Angelus Leather Paints, I'm using the color light brown, rich brown, mustard, and white for this specific pattern. Paint brushes, some people like to use cheap ones, I like to use nice ones. Both is fine, just make sure you have a variety of sizes so that you can make your life easier when doing broad work and detail work. A hair dryer, painter's tape, and vinyl tape. I use white vinyl tape, a lot of people use red. It's the same thing, I just like the way the white tape looks. Krylon Clear Matte Acrylic Finishing Spray or Angelus Finisher. Now we can get started. The first step is to remove the shoelaces. This is important because we don't want to get the shoelaces in our way when we're trying to work and we also don't want to get any paint on them. Now grab anything that you can stuff your shoe with and put it in your shoe so that you have a more solid surface to work on. You can use socks, um, plastic bags, paper bags, whatever, it doesn't really matter, old towels. Now we'll start cleaning the shoe. So take that acetone or leather preparer, put it on your cotton ball and rub the places that you're going to be painting on. It's not really necessary to do the other parts unless you're just trying to clean them. So here you see a lot of black coming off onto my cotton ball. That's because these are my used personal shoes and I've put like shoe polish on them and have, you, you know, worn them. This is still important if this is a brand new pair of shoes because you want to get the factory finish off of them and get that paint to really stick. If you skip this step, your paint might crack and it just won't really last that long. So this is important. Take your time. Get that finish off. You'll know you're finished when the leather feels a little bit sticky. There might still be black coming off on the cotton ball, but just do it by feel and then you'll know when it's done. I skipped this step on my own personal shoes, but I wanted to show y'all how to protect your eyelets. Make sure you guys do this because it's an important step. I was just lazy. So take some painter's tape and press around your eyelet until you have a nice firm seal. Take your time with this, make sure it's really good and tight. And then you can take a sharp blade, I'm using an X-Acto blade, and carefully and slowly cut around the edge where the crease is. You can pull that off and you have a nice seamless shoe eyelet. Just make sure you reinforce that with your thumbnail. Now it's time to tape off the rest of the shoe. We're going to be using the vinyl tape for this portion because it stretches really well and gets into all the little cracks and crevices along the ridges of your shoes. So the best way to use vinyl tape is sort of stretch and pull it along as you go because that will cause it to form with the ridges a lot better and make your life so much easier. Once you've taped off your entire shoe, it's time to start painting. So the first thing I want to do is put a base coat down on the shoe with my rich brown Angelus leather paint. When you're painting on shoes, it's important to paint thin layers and like a couple of coats, maybe two or three, sometimes even four, and let them all dry in between before you move on to the next coat. This is to ensure that the leather stays flexible and it doesn't get too cakey or leave any brush strokes or crack the paint 
you know, if there's too many layers, thick layers, then the paint can be more stiff and it won't move with your foot or with the shoe. So make sure you just do one thin coat and then you can move on to the next one. This coat is going to chip a little bit once we put the vinyl on and we are going to have to touch it up. So it's fine if it's not completely perfect, but I still did three coats and then, you know, you'll have to do more again later after you do the pattern. In between layers, instead of just waiting forever for it to dry, you can go ahead and blast it with your hair dryer for like a couple minutes um, until it feels dry enough to continue. And another tip also, use your bigger brush for this portion. It'll just make it go faster. Once you've painted on one or two layers of rich brown so that you have a nice solid base, we're going to just spray that or paint that with whichever finisher you chose, Krylon or Angelus. Once your finisher is completely dry, we can move on to the vinyl. I place the vinyl on top of the shoe so that I make sure not to cut it out backwards. If the logo is backwards, it's essentially useless and you'll have to throw it away. And then I like to do a rough trace of the vinyl so I know where to cut approximately. Trace it a bit bigger than the shoe so you have some wiggle room and then cut it out. Compare it to your shoe to make sure you did it right because you're going to be real mad if you do all the effort of taking out all the negative space and then find out that you did it wrong. I'm putting it on this blue mat because it's a little bit sticky so it keeps it in place when I'm trying to work instead of having it roll up on me. You could do the same thing with some tape around the edges too. And then I'm going in with something sharp to pull out all the little pieces that are cut. You can use anything like a needle, a toothpick, the tip of a mechanical pencil without any graphite in it. I'm using an X-Acto blade. Once you're finished, you're going to take your transfer paper and cut it to the size of your stencil. I have to use two pieces because my transfer paper is so small. Peel your transfer paper off of its backing and put it onto your vinyl sticky side face down. Then you want to rub out all the bubbles, make sure it's really, really on there nicely. Now you can peel your vinyl off of its backing. You're going to want to take your time with this, make sure that all the little dots and circles in the logo are sticking firmly onto the transfer tape and they all stay centered. And also be cautious so that you don't accidentally rip it Carefully line up the stencil with your shoe so that you know you have the exact placement you want. Then you can start to press it onto your shoe and peel back the transfer tape. Feel free to cut off any excess pieces that you added for security when you were measuring that aren't actually necessary now. You can use your hair dryer to help the vinyl stick better to the shoe in the peeling process because this is a little bit tedious and it's hard to keep everything where it's supposed to be. So take your time, be careful, don't get frustrated, <laughs> be patient. Once you've fully removed your transfer tape and you're happy with where everything is placed, go over it with your hair dryer to ensure that there's as little bleeding as possible from the paint to the under layer. We will still get a lot of bleeding and need to do touch-ups like I said, but this is a helpful step. I made the pattern color by blending a mixture of light brown, mustard, and white. Then paint that over your stencil. I did three or four layers and let them each dry in between before moving on to the next one. Now carefully peel off all the vinyl that you worked so hard to put on. You will notice a lot of bleeding and chipping from the paint, but that's fine because we already planned on doing touch-ups. Now using your rich brown and a small detail brush, go around all the edges and make sure to clean up the lines wherever it bled till you have a nice, clean, crisp pattern. Coat your shoe with your top coat of choice. I did two coats and I let it dry in between coats. This is the Krylon spray and like I mentioned before, you can also use the Angelus finisher. 
Now remove the tape and if anything bled under the tape at all, just use some black paint to touch that up and you can just spray it again after with another coat of finisher. Lace your shoes back up and you now have a gorgeous pair of Louis Vuitton Doc Martens. Congratulations, you did great. I'm proud of you for sticking through it. If you use my tutorial to make these, I'd love to see a picture. If you post anything online, just tag me at Charm Customs. And thank you so much for watching.